Hello, I'm Grayson, uh, or Golden Glue, the head coach for 100 Thieves. We're here doing our first podcast. It's my first time ever being a host. We're joined with our boys, Ayla, Sniper, and Meech. What's up? What's up, guys? And yeah, we're just here to free flow. I think the season's going pretty well for us. We're currently second place. Um, Recently, you went on a podcast with Armau and Jan. Do you want to explain anything about that? Uh, you know, they're talking about how, you know, our scrim results are a little different than our stage results. Um, so I think that's like a pretty funny thing that I heard you talk about last night. Yeah. So last night I went, went on a podcast with Jan Namir and I was, I was, I was receiving some flack for our performance in scrims, you know, they can't attack out for, for, for performance on stage because we've been winning. But they're calling us frauds, thinking we're not that good. So, yeah, it was a fun time. I'm with my boys, so, like, I was just bantering with them. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, they're calling us out, and it's on us to prove them wrong. I like that. I mean, I think it's, um, you know, people were shitting on us before we split. It's kind of funny that people are still shitting on us, even though we're second place. But it's it's kind of valid if you see our scrim results recently uh so how is you know we're almost done with the three-week break that lcs had how have you guys enjoyed this this uh this break i can go first yeah i've been enjoying it pretty good uh i've just been playing like a lot of solo queue um obviously putting like a lot of intensity into scrims as well and just yeah just trying to make the most out of the break by just grinding constantly. So yeah, that's how it's going for me. Yeah, but the grind's going real well, guys. Oh, <laughs> it's going amazing, actually. We're Especially loving scrims. ourselves right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you have any thoughts, Meech? It's mm, amazing. For about sure. the break or scrums? Both. I mean, they're kind of they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's kind of hard to even like call it a break because like we're still playing, but like there's no like stage games to look forward to. So yeah. it feels kind of like we're just. Beating our, beating our heads into a wall a bit, you know, just, just scrimming. Yeah. But um, I definitely haven't been the biggest fan of, like, a three-week filler uh, in the middle of the season, but it is what it is. Yeah. Feels a little bit like um, limbo, where you're just, yeah. you're playing, but you don't, it feels less purposeful because there's not a match at the end of the week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it definitely feels that way. Like... Normally, whenever we're scrimming and stuff, I always have something to look forward to, which is like our match games. But now, like that we don't play on the weekends anymore, I'm just like kind of just bored out of my mind most of the time, you know? Because mm. I'm just always thinking about like playing on stage, seeing all the fans, all that kind of stuff. It just yeah hypes me up. Something that I found like kind of interesting about our team, uh, more than more so than like almost any team I've been on in the past, is we're extremely streaky. Uh, where we will look really good in practice sometimes, and I'll just be like really surprised. I'm like, wow, I can't believe we're like doing these like macro concepts so well. And then the next week, we're just like utter dog shit in practice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I think there is something to be said about, uh, I think a lot about competitive League of Legends is just about spiking at the right time as a team. Um, so I just want to get your guys' thoughts on why we're so streaky. Like, for example, in scrims, like we had one week where we had like 15 losses in a row, and then we had another. Well, I think after the 15 loss streak, then we won 10 scrims in a row. So, do you guys? What do you guys think about that? Uh, let's start with uh, Let's start with you, Snipes. What What do I think about that? Um, I definitely feel like, but I for sure have like an on and off switch in a way, which isn't the greatest, but. Uh, I feel like I for sure just play better when uh, I guess it matters most. Unlike, you know, like when we're scrimming and stuff, I feel like I can kind of just like try out different champions. I can like play a different play style and just see what like fits best for me. But going to like our stage matches, I, 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 I already know what to do in order for me to like become a very successful laner and like a team fighter, as you guys have been seeing. So I'm just trying to like translate what how I'm playing on stage to like how I'm playing in scrims but sometimes it's just hard because I just I didn't sleep the greatest that day 
or I just, yeah, it's mainly just sleep, to be honest, for me, at least. So I'm just trying to keep that more of a consistent thing. Sleep is your only problem. The biggest difficulty for Sniper <laughs> is his sleeping. Okay, okay. I mean, it's gameplay as well, but I'm still working on that day to day, you know, by like reviewing my games and just putting full intensity into just every second of the game. So I don't yeah. autopilot. autopilot. But yeah. yeah, I do think you do play better on stage than scrims. Yeah. Sometimes. Some, uh, sometimes. Yeah, sometimes for sure. Sometimes for sure. What about you, Bill? What do you think about our streakiness? Because Sniper kind of just was like, he, he was kind of putting, he didn't say, talk about anyone else. He just talked about himself. So it's just kind of like, maybe he's the reason we're streaky in scrims. That's how I feel like most of the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah, kind of blaming on myself. Yeah, so I'd say, since we're a new team with two rookies, it's just like when you're practicing something new. Because like, I'm really bad at basketball, right? And I was playing basketball the other day. And then I shot like, Four, four, four or five shots in a row into the hoop. It was like a swish. And I was playing really well. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, for like the next 20 shots, I couldn't land a single one. Yeah. And I think I think that's similar to our team where it's like, we're kind of new. We have our good moments. But because we're not like experienced enough or like good enough yet to like consistently win, we just go through streaks where like, oh, we're doing really well. And then you start getting overwhelmed by like reviews or like what you should be trying to do. Like you're trying to push yourself to get better and there's so much to learn. And at a certain point, you just like, you get so dizzy and then you start losing. And it, I think, I think it's partially because we're rookies or like we're newer, but also maybe our personalities, like we kind of let it snowball further. Like say we start doing poorly for a bit instead of like refocusing, we're just consistently making it worse yeah so that's why we go on like some insane lost streak for a very long time in scrims but yeah something we're figuring out yeah i think that's pretty insightful i, I think i agree with most of that what do you, what about you meach what do you think yeah. i'd say like the main thing for me at least is um like the way i i want to play like i try to play is like maybe like high execution or like high risk high reward i guess like you know, you need to really be on top of your game and, like, in every moment to, like, make sure you're not just inting and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of people on our team got to play that way or, like, you know, try to play on their limits a lot. So obviously you can't always play perfectly playing like that and sometimes you're just going to look really bad. And I feel like that happens a lot with our team and... Maybe it just like spirals a bit, you know, and then we started losing a lot, but I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe we're just like streaky people in general. Yeah, I think something else that uh, happens to us is that like, you know, we, we will really try to compensate too hard for something going wrong. For example, let's say like the enemy top laner has a roam, roam timer. Instead of just saying like, ah, crap, like they got a roam timer. I'm going to get something in exchange. I'm going to get a plate or I'm going to get a first base. We like try to save an already bad play over and over. And we try to like help. We like feel bad for our teammates. We, we don't want our teammates to feel bad. So we try to help out. But then we end up actually just like making the situation worse. Yeah. That happens a lot. And I feel like the just the space like where our floor is and where our ceiling is is really wide. Like our floor and scrim sometimes is so, so abysmally low. But then... On the flip side, we can play extremely well, play team fights super well. So I feel like you never really know what's going to happen uh, in our scrims. And speaking of our scrims, um, I don't think we've ever talked about this before on the podcast, but we have a late policy. Uh, you know, so yeah, I yeah, this do. is this is something that um, I implemented, and it's something that I've had on a lot of my past teams. I think a lot of teams do it. Is if you're um, more than two minutes late you order coffee for the whole team. Yeah. Uh, actually, our whole team doesn't even drink coffee, but I think like over half of us do. Um, we've been getting a lot of value out of that policy uh, this year. Yeah, uh, but we have then, due to someone, somebody here. Somebody. Uh, I'm not trying to name any names, but like, you know, he's standing right beside me and he's just always late. 
and I get like free coffees <laughs> because of it. Like, yeah, come on, Mitch. You know, you got to do better at that. Like, stop being late, bro. You know, like, just be on time. I mean, that's pretty ironic. <laughs> that's pretty ironic. Yeah, like, but yeah, I mean. The, the two people that are always late are just blaming each other right now. Yo, bro, bro, bro. chill, chill, chill. Um, Don't call me out. Me and Grayson are just uh, reaping the benefits. Yeah, of we really policy. are. We really are. Yeah. You guys do get free coffee whenever me and Meech are late, which is like 90% of the time during scrim days. But I, I'm actually like trying to get better at that. And it's mainly just like not going on my phone before I go to sleep. So I'm trying to just like put it down by like 12.30 p.m. And go to sleep by like one but it's just like so hard you know because there's like so much excitement in me to the point where like i'm just like always thinking about the game i always want to play the game and sometimes it like causes me sleep and then like yeah it's like a it's like a loop you know that happens over and over again yeah yeah so yeah i'm just trying to figure that out my favorite part about that too is the fact that it's not, like in team reviews i feel like most of us most of the time we're always just like we're we're flaming the hell out of you, Sniper, yeah, right? We're yeah. like saying, you need to do this better, X better. We're giving you a lot of feedback. It's not all flame, but it's just like all feedback. Yeah. The one person who always is like, oh, maybe he, what Sniper did was good is Meech. Meech That's is always here, like getting out. Snipers, like he's always like, oh, maybe what Sniper did is okay. He's like <laughs> supporting him. And then we're always like, no, like Sniper's empty because of this. And anytime Sniper gets a chance to shit on Meech, he just takes it instantly. Bro, I do. I go he off actually, on he's like your ally, and then you just you just like backstab him <laughs> so fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, like I can't be the one that like everybody always blames. So like, I have to put it on to somebody else. And it's not only like in game, by the way. It's also like outside of the game where I like blame Meech from like time to time. Yeah, the battle, the Washington. apartment. <laughs> Okay, so you guys had a you guys had a maid come by your apartment yesterday because it was flagged to us that you guys maybe not had the cleanest apartment. Then you know, I we learned today uh, the maid said it was the most disgusting thing like she's ever seen. Yeah. Um, and I think that was in reference to Sniper and Meech's shared bathroom. Yeah. No, it was Bills. What do you mean? <laughs> <Bro. laughs> Somebody blaming me now. Yeah. Was. <laughs> Bro, like, she was literally cleaning Bills' washroom, and then she said that to him, you know? Our washroom was clean, but... All yeah, I'm so going to say is, I shared a bathroom with another person for a year, <laughs> and ours looks worse right now than it did after a year of me sharing with that other guy, so... Bro, that's crazy, by the way. Yeah. Like... I so know. what was going on with your bathroom? What kind of colors? What kind of scents are we seeing in there? <laughs> this is it was just grimy. Like, <laughs> no, like, yeah, that's the only way to describe it. I think. Yeah, there was there was a lot of yellow stains. Let's just put that. Nah, okay, okay, nah, I okay, don't know okay. if you can put it. Nah, bro, nah, nah, I mean, that's I staying on. That that's bro, staying bro, bro, bro. on for sure. Okay, it, it's like it's like right beside the sink, by the way. Like the stains are like. Where like our, our toothbrushes and our toothp toothpaste are at, by the way. Like or on like the counter. Something. Yeah, like on the counter. I don't know where they came from. I think it's like bacteria or something. But like, it, bro, I, over time, it just kept on getting worse and worse. And yeah, we, we just didn't end up cleaning it for some reason. And and but. also, I, you, you, you said today that you had like Chick-fil-A by the trash can <laughs> from like yesterday. <laughs> yeah. From the day before. And... and Obviously, we're at practice when the maids come by, and they they threw away your Chick Fil A, or they took it. You thought they took your Chick Fil A when I it wasn't there. You thought they ate their Chick Fil A. Yeah. So we also taught Sniper that you're not supposed to eat food that's been left out for like a full day. These maids obviously didn't eat your Chick Fil A. They tossed it because it's been out for like I don't even like know how hours. long. God knows how long yeah. that was. Learning every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm learning a lot every day. You know. But no, I mean, now I know to put my food in the fridge instead of just like leaving, leaving it at the counter. So it doesn't like freaking rot, you know? So yeah, I blamed it on the maids for some reason. That's but. really good that you're learning that now. You have so much, so much life out of you, Sniper. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, get your guys' thoughts on, now that you guys are all, obviously Bill, you're already playing the LCS, but uh, Meech and Sniper, uh, you're new. Is there anything about being an LCS player that's like kind of unexpected to you guys? Something that's not like what you thought it was gonna be like? Start with you, Bill, and then we can move along. Yeah. Unexpected thing about being an LCS player. 
Yeah, whether it's like things about living in Los Angeles or like playing at the studio, what scrimming is like. I think coming into the LCS, I had a pretty good idea. Like, because I spent two years in the academy and I was like pretty close to the LCS team, teams that were above me. I mean, but there's not much. I kind of knew what I was getting into before I came came here. So, and nothing special. That's valid. What about you, Snipes? Um, honestly, just like, I, I guess how easy it is to like get complacent and stuff. Because I, I saw myself like after we were on like the four game winning streak, when we, when like our record was second place, and, like six to three, just me like not playing solo queue for like some of the days and just like not grinding as much as I did like before. We started winning a lot. Um, so I guess, yeah, just how easy it is to get complacent. And I think the level of competition and like how easy it is for everyone to also get complacent. Because it's not only me. I see like majority of the league like not have that many solo queue games or just like I just not putting as much work as I do. Although I still see myself like not playing some of the days, you know. So just I, I think the work ethic and like the LCS, at least, is like not as bad as I expected it to be. It, like, wait, so you're you saying you expected it to be worse and it's better? No, I expected like the the work ethic for LCS players to like be a higher standard. You know, oh, than so it it's is worse. It is right it's now. worse than what you expected. It, it's it's worse than I expected, but it's also um, like very easy for you to get complacent. Is what I realized. Like after you start winning a lot and stuff, you know. Yeah. So, so does that mean you have more empathy for the players who are being complacent? Like, you understand it more? Or, like, you're like, ah, these fucking lazy NALCS players. The Redditors are going to eat that shit up. I mean, that's a pretty good question, I think. Like, I, I think it's mostly just, like, like, I, I'm I'm grinding a lot, right? And I'm, like, always playing solo queue uh, for most of the time. Um, Like, I'm always playing, you know, putting a lot of intensity into scrims. But... Uh, I guess, yeah, I, I guess now I can kind of see, like, how it is for everyone and uh, how kind of, like, easy it is to, to get complacent. So, yeah, I do kind of have empathy for them. But at the same time, like, you just got to snap out of it, you know, as soon as you're, like, you see yourself doing it. What about you, Meech? Mm. Anything unexpected? I wouldn't say so, honestly. It's kind of everything I thought it'd be, or, like, it's kind of just the same as, like, playing Academy or, like, yeah, I'd say there's not much difference. Like, I don't really feel like an LCS player, I guess. You know, I just, I'm just playing league. It doesn't feel much different, honestly. Do you feel like an LCS player? Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just feel like myself, you know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I do feel like when I started playing, I had a lot of, I had a big focus on trying to be like, quote unquote, an LCS player. And I think that once you're playing the LCS, it doesn't feel any different. So it can be kind of weird if you're expecting it to feel different. I also think with the complacency thing, something that I felt as a player and I think happens to a lot of people is a lot of a lot of League of Legends players' goals is like to play in the LCS, right? Everyone who's playing Academy, everyone who's playing Collegiate, or who's anyone who's trying to like make it pro, they're trying to play in the LCS, at least in North America. And then if you make that your goal, once you actually get into LCS and you start playing, it's like you hit your goal already. So then the complacency can already start hitting because you are you already reached your goal. I think that was something that I had to figure out is that you, it's actually just really important to have the right goals of not necessarily wanting to just like be an LCS player, be an academy player, but just like be the best version of yourself. That's who I always saw who had the most success. For example, I think Bjergsen did – showcase that really well whereas like he was always pushing pushing really hard to you know like do the most out of scrims and review in the game and it really showed with his results obviously i guess the next segue i'd go into is like how do you guys feel overall about the culture here at 100 thieves on this uh league team how do you like it what are some things that uh yeah like or dislike about it let me start with you snipes i i've been enjoying it a lot i couldn't ask for a better environment and culture um yeah i mean that's all i can really say about it other than the fact that i also think like as long as i'm like not getting into my head and stuff like 
the, the environment will be as good as like it is right now, you know? So yeah, I'm just trying to like stay away from just always just getting inside of my head. Cause it's very easy, you know, when like your competition is very high, you're playing on stage, you're playing scrims and like, and then you start losing, you know, it's very easy to just get in your head. So I'm just trying to not let that happen. And yeah, the environment will be as good as it is right now. So yeah. what do you like about it? Um, to start things off, like you and Sam, I think you and Spooks have just been like the best coaches I've like ever worked with, even though I haven't. <laughs> I've got a gun to his head right now. Yeah, no, 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 like I'm not, I'm not <laughs> even joking though, like. The environment wouldn't be as it is right now without like these two coaches, you know, like I'm saying with Joseph as well. Like I, I was even before the split started, I, I was surprised that I would even play in the LCS, you know, with like how last year went for me. So I'm just incredibly grateful already. And as soon as I entered the LCS, like I was already being challenged by you both and by Joseph himself. So and, and you got yeah, you guys have just been making it like super, super easy for me to just kind of do my own thing and then you guys kind of like just criticize me on just everything you guys can see that I can be doing better on so yeah, I, I appreciate that a lot hell yeah snipes I like that um what about you Bill I think the environment at 100 fees is pretty good I've been in a lot of environments where it's like it's suffocating to play in which ones name the team I'm not gonna name teams <laughs> not gonna name teams <laughs> not gonna name teams but it's been suffocating where it's like you struggle to play at where you think you're gonna be because like there's so much, there's so many like negative pressure from like your teammates or your coaches that just make you play worse. But I think that's like a very unoptimal environment to be in. But I think in 100 Thieves, we have exact opposite where like it's very free flowing. Like we're very open to each other and like we don't hold things back. And we, it's like an environment where the players are allowed to just play the game I think that's really good because yeah if, you, if you're talented at a game and you think you're good and then the coaches or like the environment around you allows you to play like that it's like a very good recipe for success and I think that's why we've been doing so well yeah what about you uh, Mitch mm, I'd say the culture and environment is pretty good like I, I've been pretty fortunate like Obviously, this is my first LCS team, but basically every team I've been on since like I joined Academy has been pretty, pretty good environment wise, I'd say. So, yeah, I'd say 100 Thieves, like everyone's like positive, you know, everyone's trying to get better. It's not like we're like um, too nice or anything, but I'd say like. It's just an easy environment to play in. Like, it's not much like pressure or negativity. So I think that helps a lot. Yeah, I think the coolest thing about uh, our season so far, and I, we've talked about this before, but just the stat that we have the most kills per... <laughs> That's true. Uh, the most kills, what is it, per minute of any team in any region? Is it kills per minute kills per game? Kills per game, yeah. Kills per game, the yeah. Least. Oh, so, kills per minute, I'm pretty sure. I think, I think it is kill per, kills per minute. Kills it per might minute, be kills, yeah, per, kills minute. per minute. But basically per minute, we're the bloodiest team in the whole world, which is, I think that's awesome. Uh, and I think, you know, I do feel like me and Sam try to promote you guys to just like play like animals and just do whatever you want. And we try to like refine what you guys are already good at. So it's pretty awesome to see that you guys are really taken into that and like being very free flowing. And you can see it on stage because like, all those clutch moments that, you know, like our last games were C9 and who's the other team we team played? Liquid. Team Liquid. Yeah, those are some like intense games and you could really tell that you guys felt more, I don't know, free flowing. Like we we're in pretty awful situations. We, we were on like 7K cooldown for C9 and then the other team had Ocean Soul, Callista Tarek. Somehow we beat that late game. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty awesome to see. You know, we had a pretty big week before the break versus uh, TL and C9. You know, they were both kind of like neck and neck with us in the rankings. And then also the games were just like absolute bangers. So I guess how did it feel to play in the first the Team Liquid match and then the C9 match, Bill? Yeah, so leading up to the week of TLC9, I was actually sick. So I think I played from home for like two days and then the day... Before those two days, I played at 
played at the office and I was like really out of it. So that whole week was horrible. And I was like, I was just praying that like, even though we had such a bad week of scrims that we'd come in and we'd be able to play well. And like, actually in both of those games, C9 and TL, we started the game off with like a very significant lead in the early game. Yeah. Like those leads should have, if, if we're like an LCK team or if you're watching it and like both teams are really good, the game should be kind of over. Like we should just get all the objectives and like we have such a big control over the game that it's very hard for the enemy team to come back without us making mistakes. So I was really happy with that. It's just, we ended up throwing the, that, that, that big lead into the enemy's favor. Yeah. And they got an even bigger lead. Yeah. And the even more surprising fact is that even though they had such a bigger lead over us, we still ended up winning the game. So we're just that good, I guess. Yeah, we're the gods. <laughs> what else can we say? Wait, Bill. Yeah. What do you think about your top laner in both those games? Solo killing supposedly two of the goats of any <laughs> top laners. You got any? G Snipes is the next young talent and he's already proving it. So like, what can I say? I'm really happy. You guys heard it from him. I'm the, I'm the next generation. I'm the next freaking <laughs> faker. Actually, I'm the next general sniper. The next general, the next sniper. general sniper. What can I say? I'm just that good. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. You know, after that, that match on Sunday versus C9, um, we did a fan meet and the line was actually pretty outrageous compared to the first weekend we did a fan meet and there was maybe like four people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like maybe like four. Not. And like the last match, yeah, it was probably like 30, 40 or so. Um, so I guess how does it feel like reading the community feedback, like streaming, like when you get people in your chat, like how does it feel like receiving that support from the community? Let me start with you, Meech. Yeah, so the first week we, we started winning, or uh, just had the, the fan meet. There wasn't like anyone. It was like... <laughs> there was no one. Yeah, there was like no one. Maybe like a few diehard fan, 100 Thieves fans or something. But after we won, I remember the line was like taking forever, but I don't know. I was still like thinking about the game and stuff, so it was kind of like a surreal moment. But... um. I'd say the 100 Thieves community is pretty, pretty nice, like, honestly, to us. And, like, I see a lot of support for just our team. And, uh, you know, maybe it's, like, a breath of fresh air for them. Who knows? But I'd say it's been pretty, pretty good feedback from the community. Yeah. What are you, Snipes? Uh, in terms of streaming, I haven't necessarily been streaming for, like, a long period of time due to just, like, focusing on my pro career. So I think um, I've definitely been trying to find like, I guess just moments to just stream as much as possible, but it's kind of hard for me to do when I'm just like constantly just thinking about uh, how to be the best version of myself in terms of like in game. So w once I find that, I'll be very, like very, very consistent in terms of streaming. So I I'm just like, yeah, just trying to like get that click in a way and then uh yeah i can go back to like streaming consistently again but in terms of like the community and everything else um i, I mean it's been amazing like what, what can i say well, when you're losing like no nobody's on your nuts you know but like <laughs> yeah i mean it's just true like bro every time we lost on stage like and i started walking around the venue and stuff nobody would talk to me by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro not even like the lcs casters they wouldn't like they look, don't even look at you yeah but like when you're winning, they're like, oh my, you're so good, bro. Like, can you sign my autograph? Like, oh my God, you're just my favorite player. Like, you're the next generation, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know? that so, is true. Yeah, like, uh, so it's been like, we just have to keep winning, you know, if we want to get more of that dopamine running. Um, but yeah, that's what I think about it so far. That's really it's funny. Good motivation. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just keep winning. I. It, it's been good. I mean, I'd say... Before the split started, there were a lot of mixed reactions to this roster. Like, I'd say a lot of people were like, oh, like, what's going to happen? Like, are we even going to be good? And there were a lot of fans that were uncertain. So I think it feels good to play well and, like, see those fans speak up about how much they're enjoying watching our team and how much they love, like, supporting our team. So, yeah, it's been good. And it's a big reason why I try to stream. I I don't stream a lot. 
I think scrims and like the whole pro lifestyle makes it hard for me to stream. But when I do stream, it's for the fans. So yeah, they're a big reason why I push myself to be a good player. Real quick, what is all your guys' stream like names? Is it just your name? Just what is it's it? Like Bill. My one's Ayla, but with two A's. Twitch.tv slash Ayla with two A's. What are you? Mine is General Sniper. What's yours, um, Meech? I don't even know. <laughs> you don't uh, know? Bro, it's literally Meech it's underscore Meech. lol. Yeah, so sorry. Dude, Cypher like knows? Bro, I, I was watching the stream. Wait, what is it? Meech underscore lol? Yeah, underscore lol. Yeah, so. Twitch.tv yeah. slash Golden Blue. You can watch me <laughs> fight my way yeah, through Masters <laughs> occasionally. Wait, wait, sorry, what'd you say? I said Twitch.tv slash Golden Glue. You can find me fight my way through Masters. <laughs> yeah, you with, heard him, guys. With all the other... Uh, all the other coaches. Yeah. Um, you, you actually stream the most out of all of us. No way. No. Way. I stream like once a week, maybe for like two hours, and then I'm I regret it. And I'm probably, like, well, probably more than us. That's literally more. I don't than know us, if we stream way. weekly. <laughs> no, we I don't even know if once a week is is, is uh, I get like 15 people in my chat. It's just all like other. It's like your mom. Yeah, your my mom. Siblings. It's like <laughs> Joseph Jang, Papa <laughs> Smithy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's just I've got a pretty stacked chat actually. Yeah, some VIPs in the chat. Yeah, um, yeah Blabber in there from time to Blabber, time. Blabber, Blabber's a big fan. Yeah, um, yeah, Bjergsen and even yeah, you're just tight with them like that, you know, <laughs> your homies with them. <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say that like your guys' games are so fun to watch, everyone's enjoying it a lot. Me and Sam, on the other hand, though, we're like getting a heart attack, like, we're actually fighting, like, we're both just getting up so upset, so emotional, so angry. I think we like got. We got like into a fight about random thing, watching the TL match about like, oh, we should do this differently. Uh, how, how are we f like, because <laughs> we can never feel safe. You know, we're up to 3K gold early game. It's just like, uh, you, you never know what's going to happen next in our match. So yeah. it's fun to watch, but also like uh, nerve wracking. And I think it did feel really good though that we did come out on top of the really outrageous games uh, versus TL and C9. Um, yeah, it feels great. I mean, I felt so good after those two games, bro. Like, I slept so good that night as well. Yeah. Knowing that, like, we're second place. So, uh, it's I just never felt like that before in my life until that moment. Do you think that, uh, well, we haven't had the best scrim results. Do you think that's kind of like a result of us, like, getting that high and then taking a break? Uh, I, I think for sure, yeah. Like, a lot of teams definitely underestimate us because of our scrim results, I feel like. So, going into, like, our matches, they're like, ah, this general sniper dude, like, he's just another Riven one trick, you know? Like, he's just a solo key player. And then I just, like, start solo killing everyone. And same with, like, the rest of the team. They also, you know, when I'm playing bad, it's not like I'm the only one playing bad. So, like, <laughs> hey, 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 I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put that there, you know? Uh, so, they definitely underestimate them as well, but... I think everybody on the team just like knows what their job is kind of and they just like kind of just go with the flow and try their best to win and yeah it's very good to have. Yeah. I think a lot of people underestimate us like they think we're a lot worse than we actually are and then when we, when we go on stage and like we're not playing as bad as they think we are or maybe we're even playing better than them it just surprises them. And like we're unexpected and then we just team fight our way to victory. So Yeah. Yeah, I think probably the community thinks we're a bit better than we are, but I think the other teams probably think we're a lot worse than where what we are. Yeah. They do for sure. Which yeah. I mean I can't I can't blame them if they watch our screams. I just say we play extraordinarily bad. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's, yeah. In scrims, you guys, can't, in scrims. You can't judge our Skill level of our screams. Like, it's weird to say, but we play extraordinarily bad. So Sometimes. I mean, like, when Sometimes we're in, we do well. When, yeah. when, when we're in our lull, like when we're in our. Yeah. Down, you know, I kind of had the thought actually as we were, like, we were enjoying team dinner after we won the 2 0 week. I was like, ah, we're probably going to run it the next week in scrims. So <laughs> I, I, kind of, I kind of already had that thought. I'm like, yeah, yeah we're probably going to run it now. Yeah. Like, that happens a lot after you something goes well and then there's a big break because everyone's like, feels like ah it's gonna be like easier now like we're so good we did it but it's like league is the same difficulty every day because every single game people are trying to fucking destroy you you know and uh it's not something that 
you know, if you're complacent at all, it shows really fast in league. Yeah. Um, I think what a lot of people are saying right now is like, with all, you, you know, you, you had two big solo kills against C9 TL and you have, I think, three solo kills top laid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Three solo kills. Um, but a lot of people are kind of shading you. They're kind of like, uh, you know, the enemy top is just inting. Like, you know, the solo kills aren't even real. So, what do you, do you have anything, any thoughts about that? Any response you'd like to say to that? Yeah. Uh, I'm just letting my actions like speak for my, for my words. Like before, I do the opposite, but now I'm like just letting my just gameplay do the talking for me, and I'm just gonna keep letting my gameplay do do like the talking for me, you know. So, I mean, I, I don't necessarily have like a response to that. I'm just gonna keep showing good performances on stage, just keep improving every single day, um, and just. Yeah, I mean, just keep being myself and then just, like, seeing what happens from then on, you know? So, yeah, I, I personally don't care what any tops think about me or... Yeah, I just care about what I think about myself and what my teammates think about me as well. It's, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. That's a great answer, Snipes. That's a great answer. I think that... Appreciate it. I think there is some some uh, validity to, like, when you watch what the enemy top laner is doing, like, what the fuck are they doing? But They're there's definitely- also... there's There's definitely, on the flip side of that, it's just, like... You have to be in the right mindset to like punish mistakes, right? Like, there's plenty of times where people wouldn't punish mistakes, and then they don't get a solo kill. So yeah, um, yeah, I can see where they're coming from, but I don't think it's necessarily valid. Yeah, I also wanted to say something else. Like, I think especially in scrims, a lot of the top laners don't think too highly of me because I tend to like run it down a lot. I tend to like not use or use like the wrong abilities when I'm playing my lane phase. So, I mean, yeah. Like, it's for sure a learning process for me, and I I'm like a very fast learner, as you know, Grayson could confirm that. So, like, I'm just gonna make the most out of every game I play, no matter if we win it or if we lose. That's just like a guarantee. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, I also think a big thing for scrims versus stage is that me and Sam don't always tell you what to build every oh. game in scrims. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but in our stage games, uh, you it's kind of like you have ghost riders doing your build for you. Basically. Because uh, yeah. I think a lot of times, too, you'll load into a scrim matchup and you'll just have the wrong starting item. Like You'll have D-blade D D when you should have D-shield versus some matchup. <sighs> yeah, in some matchups. Yeah, but I feel like on stage, typically you're doing the right build, the right rune setup, the right like setup, and then you can actually play better because of that. That, that's pretty accurate. That's also something I've been like trying to work on, even though it's like such a small thing. Um, pretty big thing. Oh, right, okay. It, like it's a small thing that I, I should know. You know, like does that make sense? But yeah, it, it, yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> big thing. Uh, yeah, I mean that's also another reason why I'm grateful to have Golden Glue, Golden Glue, and uh, Spooks as my two coaches. You know, like I probably wouldn't be playing as good on stage um, if I didn't have these two as my coaches. So yeah, I mean. But that's definitely a big part, I think, of why I'm playing good. Thank you. Wrong Appreciate right that. Side. I also think like we haven't really talked about River and Quid yet. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I think those two obviously have a lot of uh, credibility to our success. You know, I think Quid is like leading in player of the games or something. He has four. He has four, which is like pretty insane. Out four out of our six wins, he's player of the game. And I think you know River being the eldest player. Um, you know, we were joking yesterday that you're afraid of River Sniper. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think their their presence in the game and out of game has been honestly a lot. They've been more influential than I thought they would be in the sense that uh, they're like friendlier than I thought they were going to be. And they actually are helping the rookies out more than I thought they would be. Yeah. Uh, Sano, do you want to talk about your relationship with River uh, Sniper? The top jungle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. Uh, my my re- relationship with the river is like probably the best I could ask for a teammate. Like, I-, I think for sure if I played with like a different jungler who's like more toxic and just more like, uh, I guess, uh, like very passive aggressive, if that makes sense, which is like most junglers nowadays, you know, in the LCS, I wouldn't, I also wouldn't be as successful as I do with the river because. Yeah, I mean, he, he's just like, uh, I think he's very patient with me. He knows I need a lot of time to like improve and stuff. So he doesn't just like, like flame me turbo hard every single game whenever I have like a bad game or whatever it is. 
I can kind of just play my own game and then he can like uh, just help me adjust a lot like some things to the point where I can have a better lane phase, better team fighting, better macro, all that kind of stuff. And even outside of the game, like he's just, yeah, just very willing to just help me a lot. And he also like, he's someone you can get along with very well. And that's what I like about River too. He just, yeah, just a really good person, a really good player and a really good teammate. Now I'm learning so much from him, even when I'm having good or bad games. Yeah. Yeah. So that's first like context. I think River pretty frequently, like after the match, will instantly go over the VOD with Sniper. Yeah. And give him feedback, ask him why he's doing things. I mean, flame him, but he, he's like pretty like he's not like there's no mal intent, you know. He's not being passive aggressive. He's not trying to like make you feel bad. He's just like, Why the fuck did you do this? Yeah, you know, like yeah, it, he's just direct, you know. Yeah, like, he's just direct. Yeah. Uh and it's really easy for like, let's say you know you're still learning as a rookie and you're making mistakes like different mistakes different games i think it's really easy for that like kind of more experienced player to just check out and not try to help anymore but i think one thing i've been really impressed with is just like no matter how the games are going he continually tries to like give as much feedback to the team as possible and, and help them out yeah um and you know quick kind of is in the same boat as you guys as being more a newer player like more rookie um he's like 19? 18? He's 19 years old. 19? But for some reason, he feels so much older than you, Sniper. I don't know why, but yeah. he's kind of got like an old soul, I think. Yeah. It's definitely like I'm his son, you know? Or, or he, not, calls not you, son, he calls like, you his son a lot. Yeah. yeah. Or, or he like, calls you his kid. Yeah, his kid, his kid. Yeah, that's that's definitely what it feels like. Or like his younger brother, even, I guess. Yeah, younger brother is pretty... And yeah, yeah, like he, he just gives... Old vibes, you know, he's uh, he's very similar to River, it is like one thing I could say. Yeah. Yeah. What about uh, you, Bill? How, how do you like playing with like River and or Quid? They're both great. I didn't have too much expectation when I was coming in. I like to keep an open mind. So, yeah, they've, they've been impressive. I think Quid has been like way better than people thought him to be. Like, I think nowadays people consider him to be one of the top mids in the LCS. And I think he's been proving that. So he's been great to work with. And then River. River was a top jungler last year. And he's still a top jungler this year. He has, like, a very good understanding of what he wants to do. And, like, he provides that direction to the team. And I find it really easy for me to, like, communicate with him and, like, bounce ideas. And it's just... I think our relationship, like, it's very, it's very easy to work with him to make stuff happen. Like, with other junglers I've played with, sometimes it's very forced. Or, like, you have to revisit the basics and, like, kind of work from there and build it all the way up. But with River, we kind of just both naturally, we both naturally see the same angles. We work very well together. Like, whenever we take skirmishes in River or, like, try to gank mid or do whatever we want to do, it's just very easy to do. So, yeah, very fortunate to have him. Yeah. And and Meech, you know, I think when we, we did like internal 1v1s one day, I think the River and Quid both have like a pretty high opinion of you as well. I think they would agree that you have the best mechanics on the team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Wait, best mechanics you just said? Yes. Yo, I have the best mechanics on the team. Okay. This guy can go second, sure. But... What happened in the 1v1? You lost to, to Spooks, didn't you? Did you Didn't like, you lose like... to Spooks in 1v1 Mundo with Dodgeball? <laughs> Hey, that was. Oh, it wasn't on stage. It wasn't on stage. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't on stage. It was exactly, in practice. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know. Misha's movement is really good. Like, yeah. You might not notice it, like, if you're a viewer watching the game, but when, you, when, when like, we're ruling the games or watching team fights, watching, like, skirmishes, he just dot. He's just little wiggle, 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 wiggle. wiggle. The wiggles. <laughs> the and wiggles. So great. Absolutely awesome. outplays the enemy, like, crazily. So, yeah. Yeah. Nah. Some good mechanics there. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, I think everyone on the team has really good mechanics. Yeah. So I was like, it's yeah. not like yeah. Chris is gonna <laughs> yeah, they out, do. But <laughs> I'd say honestly think quit quit as the best mechanics out of anyone Bro. on the team. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, you get me? It's definitely quit or me, for sure. No, it's definitely not quit or general sniper, sniper, but wait, it's for sure not me. I mean it could be, I don't know. This is my opinion, you know, because you can stand behind someone and watch them play. 
So I've obviously seen everyone play, and I, I think it's probably quit. But everyone has really good mechanics. Like, if you watch team fights and stuff, or like how we play, like, no one makes like critical errors like too often. So that's probably the reason why we can like win so many of these games randomly, I'd say. Yeah. Our current, like, uh, I don't know if it's a joke or if it's just a reality, but if Meech makes it out of lane phase and he's not zero five, typically he just won't be nines the game. Yep. Um, and yeah. sniper. And sniper. <laughs> and me as well. That, that is pretty accurate. Yeah. Just get out of lane phase. I think for uh, for us, it's it's usually it's usually the decision making or like the macro or the brain power that we struggle with. If we ever just like pick a fighting comp and we just can fight twenty four seven. Yeah. That's typically where we're the most successful because even if we lose one fight, we'll probably win the next one, even if we're down gold. So we're gonna we're near the end of this podcast. Uh, let's do some shout outs or anything you guys want to say or do. So we'll start with you, Bill, and just any, anybody you want to shout out or anything you want to say to the community. Shout out to the rest of the teammates who aren't here: River Quid, Spooks. They've been great, and uh, just keep watching us hundred feet fans. We're gonna make the game spicy, so. It'll be fun. Who knows who'll win? We'll throw a few times and we might throw as well. And the winner will be whoever wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. The winner will be whoever wins. That is, yeah, that, that is true. Sniper. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, just shout out to everyone on the team. Shout out to Quinn River for not being here. Or for not being here. <laughs> uh, just shout out to them. <laughs> but, you know, fortunately, they couldn't be here. Um, yeah, just shout out my family. Shout out Wally. Yeah, shout out uh, the team, obviously, coaching staff, just everyone at 100 Thieves, and uh, been having a really good time here, I'd say, and uh, obviously all the fan base, and uh, just anyone who watches our games even, because, you know, it's nice to have people watching you play, play a video game at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, big shout out, I think, to the, to the community. Uh, you know, I've been on a lot of teams where... Uh, People just want to see you fail. So it feels good to be a part of this team and coaching you guys. It's just like, oh, people actually want to see us win. It's like a good feeling yeah. uh, for yeah. sure. Um, and obviously shout out, shout out family and and the rest of the team who's not here. Um, well, that's it. That's our first podcast show. Dunzo. Um, not bad. Maybe yeah. we'll do better next time. But I still <laughs> feel like this was a good time. It's a good chat. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I had a lot of fun as well. It was very nice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was very kind nice. Of to not, not head. He, he sure was nice. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was amazing, bro. I was just chilling the entire time, you know? Yeah. Time of my life. Piss him down. So, yeah. The Pitbull song. <laughs> A Pitbull yeah. song? What Pitbull song? I want a time of my life. You guys know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, I don't know. No, are you, bro, you guys don't know who Pitbull is? No, no I know Pitbull. I don't know the Pitbull. song you're talking about. Bro, it's like. Can you do it one more time? Let's have the time of our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. Bro, just like playing in the background or something. <laughs> and I'm like, the fans will know what I'm talking about. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. It's for sure. They'll play it on the background. Wally's got your back. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you, Wally. Um, thank you guys for uh, watching this video. Leave a like, comment, and let us know uh, what you guys think we should name this podcast. We're not sure what we want to name it yet. So maybe you'll decide.